Clarifications, please. Ms. Tin Pei Ling. Uh,第一呢,就是新加坡在实现我们数码经济还有智慧国的这个愿景这方面呢,是在必行。但是在我们的这个新加坡群体里面,我们仍然有那么一代的这个长辈们,他们对于这个数码的掌握,数码知识还
。那么通过这样子的一个项目呢，呃，主要是让呃年长者学会怎么样的呃借阅电子书，怎么样的利用网络。那么刚才我们所介绍的很多的这个呃电子书的方便，我们希望年长者呢也可以呃享受到，也可以运用自如。呃，提到这个政策的呃沟通。呃，以及怎么样的同民众交流，这个确实也是呃我们部门一直在努力的方向。呃，其实我呃在这里呢也、呃、鼓励我们呃许多的这个呃国会的同僚呃善加运用呃我们的财政部所提供的各种有关，比方说我们的财政预算案的各类的信息资料。呃，现在呃应该说呃找到这种四种。呃，语言所发布的这个资料应该说是越来越多，而且内容也越来越丰富。呃，那么呃，我们也希望说，通过不仅不仅是书面的讲解，呃，我们的财政部现在也提供了这个呃幻灯片，呃 PPT 的幻灯片，而且呢还有配音，啊、呃，那么能够让呃国人更好的。呃，能够运用，呃，能够更好的能够理解一些不同政策，呃，能够有人生讲解，我觉得，呃，这是呃我们一类的尝试。那么它可以配合一次性的呃电视节目或者是电台节目，然后能够加深民众对于很多重要课题的印象。So Daryl David. Uh, two points of clarification. First point, I believe, should be for uh, SMS SIM N because it pertains to the library and digital books. Just wanted to ask the SMS, um, could she perhaps update on some trends in um, e-books uh, or digital book borrowing? And do you see a trend in e-books or digital books perhaps even outstripping um, conventional publications or books in the long run? Uh, second point of clarification is for, um, I believe it could be for Minister. Um, I did attend the National Archives exhibition, Minister, and I really have to commend the National Archives team on the wonderful job that was done. I was wondering if the National Archives could perhaps engage other government agencies, say the Ministry of Education, for example, to ensure that all the excellent work that has been done could also be shared with um, our students in primary school and secondary school. Uh, in the past, I believe this would involve uh, an excursion to the National Archives building itself, and I believe that might be the case for some material, but I believe much of what I saw was digitalized and can be brought onto screens and brought into the, the, the schools. So is that something that uh, perhaps the Minister could consider in terms of um, uh, exposing more of our younger Singaporeans to, to all of this rich history? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Darrow David, for your question on e-books. Um, indeed, we have seen very rapid growth uh, in the use of e-books amongst our library users. Um, from 2017 to 2018, the uh, digital loans have almost quadrupled from about 1.5 million such loans uh, to 5.8 million loans uh, in 2018. However, uh, this remains a fraction uh, when compared to the physical loans, uh, which uh, in 2018 stood at about 33 million. Um, so I think it's a situation in which e-books and e-loans are um, growing very rapidly. Uh, but I would say that uh, physical books are still very dominant. Now, as to whether one will outstrip the other, uh, I think that remains to be seen. But I think what's clear is that uh, NLB very much should be uh, with the e-books trend uh, to ensure that while they take care of readers who prefer uh, physical books, at the same time we have to ensure that our collections of e-books and newspapers and magazines uh, continue to be enriched. Mr. Leon Pereira, uh, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think it's actually a very useful set from uh, SMS and earlier reply. Um, in fact, uh, the digital platforms are very effective in reaching certain demographics. And the growth in e-books and the borrowings has largely been driven by a younger demographic. Um, but I think in general, uh, as uh, SMS answers, book borrowings and physical books also continues to hold its own. So I think we are in a good situation and we want to encourage the reading habit through whichever channels in order to broaden the reach. And in that vein, your second question about archives we agree with you fully. In fact, the archives have a very rich treasure trove of uh, information 
And one of the things that we are doing in the course of this year, as I highlighted, is really digitalizing the content <coughs> and then finding ways to propagate it with the larger population. And so videos, which will be put out by NLB through its platforms, is going to be one important channel. In fact, much of the material is already available on that. Archives, uh, archives material is available digitally. So I think we will certainly pursue the option of seeing how we can go in a more targeted way, for example, to schools. But at the same time, I would just urge all members to also uh, propagate the message. I'm sure all of you have downloaded the NLB app and are using it actively. And I hope that you will then uh, also continue to uh, share that uh, experience with all your constituents and others that you are interacting with. Thank you. Mr. Leon Pereira. Uh, thank you, sir. I uh, just have one uh, point of clarification for the SMS, Ms. Sim Ann, and I thank uh, the SMS for her detailed response to my speech on uh, publishing uh, opinion polls. So my, my, uh, and, and, and from uh, the SMS's reply, she cited some examples of opinion polls that have been released. I assume that some of these uh, government opinion polls are for internal reference and are not released. So my point of clarification would be uh, what would be the uh, concern or impediment or, or issue with uh, making a, a more general rule to release the results of all of such surveys uh, unless there are strong reasons not to, such as national security, uh, such as uh, sensitive issues or, or so on and so forth, so as to release that uh, information to the public uh, domain for stakeholders to use. Thank you. Uh, I thank uh, Mr. Leon Pereira for his question. Uh, as I've mentioned just now in the speech, um, the government releases uh, results of surveys uh, that may be of interest uh, to the public. And as for uh, the kind of reasons that he has shared earlier, indeed these are some concerns because some of the uh, surveys may touch on issues with regards to security or it may affect market sentiments on specific sectors. So these would be some of the reasons, for instance, why uh, not all survey results would be, re uh, would be released to the public. Ms. Rahayu Mazam. Thank you, Chairman. I have a question for SMS Janil. Um, he had earlier given a very um, uh, um, descriptive um, plan of the cybersecurity um, state of affairs um, Singapore, and I wanted to just um, understand a little bit more about how we are actually assessing or measuring our uh, savviness of our people um, in, in dealings um, in the cyber world, because um, it would be useful to actually understand where are some of the weak points, um, and what uh, you've mentioned earlier about um, issues with regard to using Lex passwords, um, phishing and all that. Clearly there are some areas where we could improve on and I appreciate that the efforts with the Media, Media Literacy Council as well as, well as with NLB is sure, um, but are there some areas that we could look at and how we can uh, measure and assess and target um, some of the um, efforts so that we can improve cyber security in Singapore? Mr Chairman, I thank uh, Mr Rahim Azam for the question. Um, so you asked about how do we assess the savviness uh, with respect to the cyber. Actually, it's a very difficult thing to measure because the technology is uh, moving quite rapidly and the kind of products and services that are being developed are also uh, um, not thought of today. I mean, people are imagining new business models. You don't really know what will catch fire. Um, in a way, we, we try to by looking to see when things go wrong. So, you know, scams or cyber breaches or uh, um, theft of information and so forth. So we, we can measure it when things go wrong, but uh, that isn't necessarily a good example of how uh, savvy we are, which is the word that the member used. Um, internationally, people have tried to develop these measures around knowledge. So how, if you take a poll or a sample, whether they're secondary school students or early ad, uh, adults or across the population segment, what do people know about it? Um, then you can perhaps also look and see, for example, what are the uh, products and services that businesses would use and are either knowledge within the business community or the use of protective technologies within the business community. And people have tried to come up with these types of measures. And on these types of measures, we come out very well. But that's not something to, uh, to, to, to sort of uh, pat ourselves on the back and assume that there'll be no problem. Actually, we do have to keep reminding ourselves. 
Um, the key issue is really human behavior and the social factors. Uh, in a way, technology is the easier thing to measure. So we can do, for example, penetration testing. We can do audits of the use of technology, audits about um, uh, processes with respect to, for example, thumb drives and locking down systems and internet surfing separation. But the much harder thing to measure, assess, and change is human behavior. Don't share your passwords and uh, don't download suspicious material, which is why I took the opportunity to remind members of these few things that we should do. It's something where, like crime, like real world safety, like road safety, it, it's sometimes useful to uh, remind and repeat and remind and repeat and use learning opportunities to reinforce good behavior. And I think we have to just keep going down that path. Mr. Villain. Thank you, Chairman. I have one clarification for Minister uh, on the issue of personal data protection. Um, one of the points which I raised was about the work of the PDPC in helping to achieve outcomes for complainants. And I believe that uh, in his uh, response, the Minister did say that uh, cases could be referred to mediation. We, we know that's provided under the Act. Uh, it's also provided that the PDPC could direct resolution of a complaint in a way that it considers a fit. So I'd like to ask Minister if he can confirm if there have been any cases where these alternate dispute resolution methods have actually resulted in uh, compensation or in a payment of some settlement sum to the complainants, whether he's aware if there have been such cases. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm not aware of such cases. So I'm pleased to learn from SMS men that the, li the library is planning to build another 8 to 10 learning ports. I'm just wondering whether uh, is there plan to build a learning port in Bukit Panjang Library? Uh, thank Dr. Teo Hopin for being such a strong supporter of the le learning ports. We will consider putting one in the uh, Bukit Panjang Library. Mr. Cedric Fu, would you like to withdraw the amendments? Uh, Chairman, sir, uh, whilst there are many challenges, as this House discussed, uh, as Singapore embarks on this digital transformation, but as we were also told, the benefits are actually massive. And all of us, as Minister pointed out, would like every stakeholder, government agencies, businesses, workers, and the citizen, uh, to join this very exciting journey. So with that, Chairman, sir, I beg leave to withdraw the amendment. Is the Honourable Member given leave to withdraw the amendment? Aye. I think leave of the majority is given. The amendment is withdrawn. The question is that the sum of $987,540,000 for HQ stand part of the main estimates. As many as our opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is that the sum of $54,080,000 for HQ stand part of the development estimates. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.